South Beach, Miami, Florida. Yes, where the sun is hot, the people are hotter, and the hottest ticket in town, of course, is the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Oh, baby, we are kicking things off with the preview. Two big fights to wet your whistle, to give you that little bit of taste, to get you ready for the epic main card, and of course, our co-main and our main event. Our co-main event is for the interim BKFC middleweight championship of the world as Yuli Diaz takes it on Francisco Riki in what should be an instant classic. And then our main event, yes, champion first champion. This fight is for the BKFC welterweight gold held currently by Elvin Brito. This is a rematch. This is a chance for Palomino to get a title in two weight classes. It's all here tonight here at BKFC 26. And we are here at the Hard Rock Live once again at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. And folks, we just know that things get real hot inside this building when it comes to the baddest athletes on the planet today here at BKFC. And folks, you're all watching this on free view, but if you want to watch the entire show, you got to go to our BKFC app. Or for simply, it's $4.99 for all of our events a month. That's right, sometimes we have two, three live events every month, plus you get all of our archive footage, plus you get all the news, all the news about the fighters, the merchandise, ticket links, everything is right there in one app. That's the BKFC app on any of your app stores. Well, folks, when you talk about that main event, where it is champion versus champion, where it is a rematch, it all happened the first time around in 2020 at BKFC 10. Now let's go ahead and go ringside to our commentators, Sean Wheelock and Chris Lytle. And Sean, we remember this matchup very, very vividly just a few years ago. I think it's fair to say that we have two different fighters on our hand right now. Cyrus, it's the evolution of these two fighters. Quite frankly, it's the evolution of the sport of bare knuckle fighting. BKFC 10, February 2020. Elvin Brito, the biggest fight of his life, MMA or bare knuckle to that point, versus Luis Palomino after a great run in mixed martial arts, making his BKFC debut. Palomino winning a unanimous decision, showing outstanding precision, superior defense, but Elvin Brito in the defeat felt very good about that performance. He told us afterwards, I've changed from that fight. I knew that I could fight the best in the world. I've taken this sport more seriously. Indeed, he has since that loss, four straight wins, including capturing the BKFC welterweight title versus Caleb Harris this past January. Yeah, totally different fighter right there. That was the fight that changed him. That's when he said, I need to be more offensive. And we've seen that from him ever since then, Sean. And folks, for everybody out there that likes to put a little bit more on these fights, put a little something, something on these fights. Of course, the odds brought to you by betonline.ag. Now, Chris, what are you seeing here on our main event? Very interesting right here. Elvin Brito is a two to one underdog, pretty much. You have to bet $100 and you win 215. Palomino, on the other hand, you have to bet $275 to win just 100. The odds makers right now are really going with Luis Palomino as being the favorite. Now that's our main event. Obviously a lot more on this card. It is once again fully loaded here in South Florida. Now before we get to the first fight, let's go over the rules here at Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. All about scheduled for five two minute rounds and are scored by three judges on the 10 point must system. Remember punching in the active clinch is allowed. There is a no three knockdown rule that is not in effect. And any MMA rules, kicks, knees, elbows, they're all illegal, as well as all takedowns and submissions. But let's get to the action. Let's get to the first fight of the night. And to do that, it's the Crescent Tools. Tail the tape. We open at 145 pounds, Freddie Masabo versus Will Shunt. And Sean, you can see here, very significant reach advantage for Freddie Masabo. He is about five and a half inches. That means Will Shutt's going to come throwing bombs. We knew that. It's up to Freddie Masabo to make it pay each time by keeping away, popping that jab, and hitting that too. Three fights in BKFC for Will Shutt. His most recent this past May, he defeated Cody Land by first-round knockouts. Sean, you can see here, 
Wilshet did not like his performance before this. He said he wasn't open enough. He wasn't as explosive as he likes to be. Changed that up this fight. He said this is how he's going to fight from now on. He's going to come out here, throw the bombs he likes to throw, bring it to his opponent. He knows he will leave holes. He knows he will leave gas, but that doesn't matter. He feels like as long as he hits you, he's going to hurt you. Showcase that right here. He has power in both hands, and he looked just very elusive in his own right because he understands exactly when dangerous punches are coming, but he knows if he throws his own hard punches and he lands them, he feels like he's going to hurt you. That's what he's done. Most of his career, he felt like the time he didn't do that. He paid the price. He's learned. He's going to continue to come out and throw hard the entire time, Sean. Will Shutt won one and one in BKFC. 54 fights in his pro MMA career. Shutt said, I want to come inside immediately, work the clinch versus Freddie Masabo. Shut very clear-eyed in his approach and his assessment of Masabo in his strategy for this featherweight fight. Shut said Masabo is a very good boxer and I cannot let him turn this bare knuckle fight into a boxing match. Shut very bluntly said, he's a better boxer, but I'm a better fighter. Absolutely, he was very confident about the fact that he feels like he's such a hard hitter and bare knuckle. He wants to test his opponent's chin. He's not sure his opponent's ready for what's gonna happen. He wants to make sure he hits him clean right away to make him feel that power. Shut said, I'm willing to take shots. I'm even willing to lose the opening two rounds to chase down, wear out Freddy Masabo and establish myself in the dominant clinch. He wants to get in that clinch, wear his opponent down, be active in that clinch. He wants to make sure his opponent does not control the race at all the entire fight. This is the BKFC debut for Freddie Masabo. 4-0-1 in pro MMA, was a member of the Cuban national boxing team. 308 amateur boxing bouts for Freddie Masabo. He's very close friends and his regular sparring partner of the former WBA welterweight champion, Denis Ugas. Masabo said Ugas told him in his bare knuckle debut, you have to put a premium on defense, you have to be first. Well, that's his goal. He does not want to get hit. Always wants to be moving. Describes himself as a counter puncher, very fast, but yet very slick at the same time, Sean. Masabo used the word stylist. He said, I'm a stylist as a fighter. I'm slick. I throw fast counters. I want to be elusive. Level changes and slips. Of Will Shutt, he said he's very predictable with his MMA striking. It's powerful, but he throws wide and he throws a very traditional, very typical MMA sequence. He feels like Will Shutt is going to come with fast, hard punches, but he's going to leave himself open, and that's going to be the key to get that knockout. Masabo said, double jabs, establish my boxing, be smart while being aggressive. To get us started, we send it to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Hard Rock Live here at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Hollywood, Florida. And welcome to BKFC 26. BKFC Freeview begins with five two-minute rounds in the featherweight division, presented to you by Crescent Tools. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears black and yellow. He stands five feet, eight inches tall. His official weight, 145.8 pounds. His bare knuckle record stands at one victory opposite a single defeat with one fight even. Fighting out of Ankeny, Iowa. Here is Will the Thrill Shot. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears red trimmed in white and blue. He stands five feet, nine inches tall. His official weight, 145.3 pounds. He holds an undefeated MMA record at 4-0 with one fight even, and tonight makes his bare knuckle debut. Fighting out of Santiago de Cuba, Los Pinos. Here is Freddy Masavo. 
Referee in charge of the action, Chris Young. This and all bouts this evening are scheduled for five two-minute rounds. Hey, They're scored by line. three judges assigned by the Florida Athletic Commission Listen on the 10-point bus system. Luke, when are you ready? Let's knuckle up! Round number one. Fast start off the scratch line for Will Shutt. He's in the black and yellow. Red, white, and blue for Freddie Masabo. There's that hunt down, lock down pressure. No, 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 There's a slip by right. Chris Young. Slip. Right. Like Masabo got right. too excited okay. right there and no, tried no. to punch it down. Will. Overhand right from Masabo. Shut off the jab. Right hand now switching orthodox back. Southpaw back orthodox for Will Shut. Continual switching of stances. Bouncing the step of Masabo early on his bike circling out. And Will Shutt is being true to his word. He is willing to take one, to give one, but he's not really giving him as much right now. It was the overhand right from Masabo now into the clinch. I got you, I got you. Break clean, baby. Look, look. Three, Christopher Young, one of the best in both boxing and bare knuckle, keeping this fight flowing. 110 remaining, round number one. There's the entry. Stop, 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 stop. Good turn. Again, ruled a slip. All right. Single-mindedly, shut coming forward as he told us he would do. Will Jab Shep to the body. Continues to change from left hand to right hand. He's going to get himself caught. Just yeah. like that. That's a clean knockdown on the Look, overhand look. right from Freddie Masabo. Walk to me, baby. Walk to me. All right. Look, look. Shut's got to be very careful right now. Masabo's going to come for that finish, throwing hard punches. Shut cut under his right eye. Wide punches from Will Shut. Masabo circling out. 30 seconds remaining, round number one. Good jab into that cut from Masabo, then the right hand. Masabo, you see, staying on the outside, eluding that rear right hook. Good right hand in the left hand from Masabo. Shut now throwing back. Overhook snapped by Masabo to get the break. Look, look. 10 seconds, Jimmy. 10 seconds. Straight right hand from Masabo. Shut wide. Punches to the body just off the mark. We thought this would be a fun fight. It's a really fun fight. That's the end of round number one. Will Shut just showing a lot of toughness right there by taking all those punches. But Masabo's doing a great job. He's just being elusive. And every time he ducks under, he's coming back with punches. And those are the shots that do the damage to Will Shut. Because Will Shut's throwing punches, leaving himself exposed. And then Masabo comes with those punches. That hurts. And here's this what we're talking about. Will Shut throwing punches. Masabo just countered. Masabo's got really, really good, accurate hands right now. Nice, just a little combination by Masabo right there. I think it's the main thing Masabo's really capitalized on right now is his defensive ability to not get hit. Will Shut, though, these wide looping punches, Masabo sees him able to counter. Will Shut's going to have to close that distance a little more, get in the face of Masabo to make it to where he cannot counter. Free Chris Young telling both fighters to toe the line. They oblige up to scratch three feet apart as we start round number two. Will Show was talking about wanting to get in and get to the clinch. I think he needs to try and get there. Lead left hook from Masabo. Overhand right. Big swings on the entry. Counter left hand from Masabo. Shut again. Switching stances. Good clubbing left hand from Masabo. Masabo fast left hand. Measuring now from Shut takes that naked rear right hand from Masabo. Masabo circling out again. Left hand, that did not fully land on the top of Shut's head. 80 seconds remaining, round number two. Swing and a miss from Shut. Can you see the elusiveness of Masabo? Masabo, big right hand, flat on his back goes Will Shut. When Masabo gets off first and he throws those power punches, he's just landing nice and clean. Up at nine is Will Shut. Hey, protect yourself, okay? Telling referee Christopher Young he wants to continue. Masabo can now see the finish line, trying to reach it here in round two. Hooks to the body from Freddie Masabo. Left hand, knockdown number three. Four, six, And those seven, body punches might have done it, eight, Young. Nine, ten. The count of ten reached, and the win in his BKFC debut for the Cuban, Freddie Masabo. I mean, just too fast, too elusive. Hard punches right there. He waited for the right time. He landed those first. I mean, when he comes with that right-hand lead, those were devastating, Sean. 
from the Cuban national boxing team to success in BKFC. And here it is, just clubbing, just, just that straight right, right down the pipe. Like Wilshet was looking more for that left hand. Here's the finish right there. Just decided to attack that body. Michelle, we, we've talked about it a lot. Every time you attack the body here, when you land those hard shots, that's all she wrote. It's hard to deal with that. It's a stabbing right into the gut. You can't breathe. It's over. 18 years ago, Freddie Masabo competed in the 2004 Olympic qualifiers for Athens. Tonight here at Hard Rock Live in Hollywood, Florida. He achieved success in his BKFC debut versus the always tough and competitive Will Shutt. That was a quality performance, Chris. Absolutely. Like I said, Will Shutt's tough. You knew what you were going to get with him. He's going to come in, come forward. He did exactly what he said he was going to. He wasn't able to get to the clinch as much because Freddie Masaba was hitting with so many clean shots. Will Shutt being attended to by BKFC's chief medical officer, Dr. Don Muzi. And look what they're looking at, Sean. Not the head shots, the body shots. We talk about that. When you get hit with one, a hard punch to the body, to the ribs especially, it's over. You can't breathe. Everything shuts down. People don't understand. Like, get up. I, I'm trying to get up. I can't. I cannot breathe. If you can't breathe, you cannot fight. Obvious disappointment for Will Shutt in his fourth bout in BKFC. Again, very clear-eyed in his assessment of Freddie Masabo. Ultra respect for the boxing, the hand speed, the overall skill set of Masabo. Shutt said, I have to make this a fight. I can't let Masabo make this a boxing match. Masabo didn't just make this a boxing match. He made this a bare knuckle fight, but he showed some real finesse, some real style in his boxing. Absolutely. Like I said, that head movement was something else. Here is Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Chris Young, reaches the count of 10 at 1 minute 21 seconds into round number two for your winner by KO, Freddie Masabo. Sean Masabo had a fantastic debut. You got a guy with that kind of power, that kind of speed, and elusiveness, and the boxing background. I mean, he's going to be tough to deal with for anybody. His close friend, the great Jordanis Ugas, told Freddie Masabo put a premium on defense, but the offense was there as well. That was knockdown number one on the overhand right. Three knockdowns and all to the victory. The winner, by way of second round KO, Freddie Masabo defeats Will Shutt. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Watch every live Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship pay-per-view event for only $4.99 per month. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including unlimited access to the full library of BKFC pay-per-views, behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live Bare Knuckle fights from around the globe. You can access it anywhere you want, anytime you want, instantly on most streaming devices. It's all available right now on the new BKFC app. All here for only $4.99 a month. Knuckle up with a new BKFC app. Still only $4.99 a month. I'm the one and only MVP, Michael Venom Page. Entertaining, unusual, unique. I like to do stuff that doesn't necessarily make sense. Putnam! I think I'm one of the toughest men on the planet. It may not always be pretty, but damn it, you can't beat me. We'll see if he ever comes forward at all. I want to go in there, I want to land shots and not be touched. I'm more a sniper. Like I said, man, if he's there at the end of it, well, he'll be bleeding. Connor, the Brumtown Bomber! Tierney! Bare Knuckle Fighting Championships is brought to you by Crescent Tools, OnlyFans, BetOnline.ag, and Eight Man Strong. BKFC is back for the third time at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. 
also running it back tonight, Beck Rawlings and Britton Hart. It's our feature fight here at BKFC 26. I'm not ready. It's fit. How are you, love? I'm good. I'm good. Where's trouble? Swear you won't be using me in any of this. You can't even understand what I'm fucking saying. Like, stop. I'm not worried about like this. Do whatever you need to. I'm not going to see it again. Eh, uh, top of the morning. I'm just going to go. I've been in the sport of fighting since 2010. I started training in MMA. I just got into it to get fit, uh, get back into shape after having my my kids and I uh, kind of fell in love with the sport and started training full time and took my first fight a year after um, started training and and kind of fell in love with it. I fought on the local scene here in Australia five times before I got signed to Invicta Fighting Championships, which is an all-female promotion. It was like, you know, it's one of the biggest promotions for women. Um, it was the only promotion back then that you could really get uh, signed to internationally. And so I fought for them three times before the UFC decided to bring in the women to, to the UFC. So uh, I later on had, I can't even remember how many fights I had with the UFC, but <laughs> I had a, f a fair few with them. And then I went to, I went to Bare Knuckle Fighting Championships and I had a little um, stint with Bellator after that. Uh, fought for them for a year, had three fights with them. Oh no, sorry, two fights with them. And now I'm signed back to Bare Knuckles, so <laughs> I've been around a little bit. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Join me again. Three. Two. Four. Two. Two. Four. Get the consistent punching and then be able ability just to be able to pop your punch out. So if someone's on you, you can just automatically just go pop quickly and fast. Oh, same words. Quickly and fast. fast. Yeah. No, yeah, Once I did sign with Bare Knuckle, it was in the middle of um, coronavirus, and Australia has just been really difficult to get out of, to get uh, you know the, the, all the logistics to try and get a visa and and my passport and things like that. So I've kind of been sidelined for you know two years now. I've been in a fight camp thinking. I'm fighting and then Australia's got a different a different idea for me so I'm excited to be back I'm excited to finally get the ball rolling and um, you know uh, remind a few people of uh, who the real queen of Ben Uckle is. The female division on BKFC is it's interesting uh, there's a lot of girls with a lot of personalities um, and they're definitely confident. Uh, I, they definitely go out there and, and fight their asses off, which I love. I, I don't really think there's very many skilled bare knuckle boxers. I think Britton Hart's very confident um, in herself. You know, when, when she says she's, she's going to win, she actually believes it. She's not, you know, she's not making that up. She believes that she can do things, and that's cool. Um, it's just, there's a difference between, like, reality and, and what you think, and I don't think the reality of it is that she's got the skills to beat me. I don't think anything she's bringing to the table um, is really going to give me any trouble. I'm definitely not going to take the fight easily. You know, she does, she does, like I said, she does like to brawl. She swings wild. You think you're in a safe position, and, and she's hitting you from weird angles. So, um, but I think from the experience from our first fight, I've definitely taken a lot from from that, and I'm just going to improve on that and, and make sure I don't get hit with you know stupid, make stupid mistakes with my defence and uh, relaxing when I shouldn't relax. going to beat Beck Rollins and really why I beat her the first time was is you know I, I've been in it 
A hundred percent. You know, I don't just put something half-assed or when it's convenient for me. Um, I've really been busting my ass since 2018, even before that. But when it comes to bare knuckle, I've been busting my ass 2018, 19, 20. I was uh, the fighter of the year last year. And then right now, I'm fighting someone that you wouldn't even dare step up to fight. Like, where'd you go? I thought when Beck Rollins came back, she was supposed to get an automatic title rematch. But I bet she doesn't want to go with Christine because she doesn't have the balls or the heart it takes to fight someone who's really fucking challenging. Which I don't know why she thinks I'm fucking that much easier. So I guess I really just have to show to everyone that I am the toughest opponent and basically the gatekeeper, the queen of bare knuckle because to get in that bitch, you have to go through me. I hear a lot of people throw shade at me, you know, I'm ratchet or one of the most disrespectful shit talking female fighters on the roster, but I'm like, oh yeah, that's right, people forgot about Beck. <laughs> because really, she's the worst fucking shit talker and, and she doesn't give really anybody compliments and if she does, they're really shitty. And um, it just says a lot for someone who went away from bare knuckle, went to Bellator and was one and one. And says a lot to someone who got their ass kicked by Paige Van Sant when I'm sitting here beating her. So I'm just looking to win the round in whatever way I have to win it. If I win it by points, if I win it by quality shots, if I win it from not getting hit, and if I win it from knockout, doesn't matter, but I'm gonna win all the rounds. Oh. Yeah. What? My knuckles are too hard for you? No way. You're getting dangerous, huh? All right. Whoa, it does look cool, huh? <laughs> Cute. Another one? Aw. It's cute. I like your outfit with it too. It's pinky. All right, ready? Like we're both falling on you. Cool. This was really fun, huh? I like it, it was really neat. I think we got a lot of cool ones. What are we doing again to play a game against 2v2s? Yeah. Who's on whose team? I'm on your team. You're on my team. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Shoot, I don't point <laughs> Go on, take the shot, I got the rebound. <laughs> Woo! We win. Is this regulation size? <laughs> Who not, a, not a bit of sweat on me. Finely tuned athlete. <laughs> <laughs> Her punches come from awkward angles. Uh, where you think you're safe and you know, you've know you clocked one on them, she's gonna swing back. Um, so there's never a moment that you're kind of out of danger with Britain because she doesn't do things by the book. You know, If I get hit, I'm gonna step back, reset. She just swings, close her eyes and swings for the fences. So it definitely brings a different kind of aspect to the fight, a bit more uh, strategy on my end. But you know, she has showed some skill, but I think I don't know if it's her, she's not, you couldn't even say she's green into the sport because she's had a lot of boxing fights. I think she's just not very, doesn't have that much fight IQ and can't keep it together very well. And she gets overwhelmed quite easily. And when she gets overwhelmed, she just starts brawling. It's just gonna sit there. You know, that's what Beck Rawlings says. Sit there and wait for the silly mistakes. And you know what? Um, more fight IQ, we'll get, I have more experience, more talent, well, whatever, I have more heart. So heart beats talent when talent doesn't work hard and bitch, you haven't been working hard. Well, I feel the fact that I was training at a YMCA by myself in 2018 and got you a split decision. If you think you don't have any trouble, who's really delusional? Britain's definitely more experienced, but like I said before, I don't, I don't think she's really changed that much. Uh, 
I think at the end of the day, she's going to get hit and she's going to hit panic button, like you said, and um, and she's just going to swing for the fences. So it's going to be the similar approach. You know, I definitely have improved since I last fought her, even though I haven't fought, um, had that many bare knuckle fights since. I've still been training. I've still been in camp. I have more talent. I'm more technical, and um, I'm just going to set set traps and take advantage of her silly mistakes, which I know she'll make. Well, she might have a point there, Britton Hart, saying has Beck Rawlings really been working hard? Is the talent going to carry her? Let's go back ringside and talk to our commentators, Sean Wheelock and Chris Lytle. And, Sean, take us all the way back. It seems like an eternity ago. BKFC number two when they first fought. How do you feel like it's going to be different? August 2018, Biloxi, Mississippi. On that card, by the way, Chris lights out Lytle in his BKFC debut. First round knockout versus Drew Lipton. This fight going the distance, a split decision win for Beck Rawlings. Now contentious as we come into this rematch, BKFC 26. Rawlings said, how is that a split decision? I won at least four, if not all five rounds. Britton Hart said, I feel that I won the fight. Rawlings was more technical, but I was more aggressive. I definitely won the first time around. There's the evolution of bare knuckle. The biggest difference is that Beck Rawlings, the original queen of bare knuckle, left the promotion after BKFC4, February 2019. Two fights in MMA and Bellator now back to the sport. Britton Hart, that was her BKFC debut versus Beck Rawlings. Since then, she has gone on the fight another six times. She has shown rapid evolution. With that being said, Beck Rawlings was dominant her first run in BKFC, and she enters this fight supremely fit. Now, Nerd Focus is bringing us the keys to victory here, so I will go to you, Chris, because as Sean mentioned, you've been inside that squared circle. What do you think the keys to victory are for both fighters? All right, so it's very different right here. The main thing with Britt, she's got to prove right away that she's not the same fighter as she was before. She's got to control the ring. She's got to pressure back from punching from all angles. We talk about a lot. She wants to throw odd angles and continue to pressure. She has to overwhelm a fighter who hasn't fought bare knuckle in three years. You talked about hard work. We don't know what Beck's really been doing. We don't know exactly what she's up to, so she has to come out. Beck Rawlings, on the other hand, she's got to come out and prove that she still has what it takes, and she's going to do that by throwing nice, straight, crisp, clean punches. That's where she feels she's better than everybody else. She's very technical, so she has to make sure she's, she's out there. She's throwing that jab, that one-two. She wants to make Britt pay each time she steps forward. Every time she kinds to go to throw those, those crazy odd angle punches, she wants to make sure that Beck is eating a punch, a jab, a one-two every single time. Now, now Chris, betonline.ag bringing us the odds here. What are you seeing here in our feature fight between Hart and Rollins? Very close fight we have here. Back rides being plus 100. That means if you bet 100 dollars, you win 100. Being the underdog, Britt Hart, a slight favorite, meaning you have to bet $130 to win 100. Both these are very close fights. I think everybody understand that this is very competitive. Not real sure. Britt Hart is a slight favorite, though. Well, your final free view matchup is coming up right now. And with that being said, let's go to the Crescent Tools. Tail the tape. We move to the heavyweight division. Steve Townsell versus Idris Wasi. Sean, you can see here, not too much of a difference. A slight two-inch reach advantage for Steve Townsell. We know Wasi's going to want to step in, throw that big right hand, throw those left hook power shots. It's going to be up to Steve Tressel to try and keep him away. Idris Wasi enters 1-0 in BKFC. His debut in the promotion this past May, he defeated John McAllister by first round knockout. Wasi, a veteran of 21 pro MMA bouts, including one in Bellator. He's also had four pro boxing matches. Wasi said he learned in his BKFC debut this past May that he knows the importance now of being first in this sport. Interestingly enough, Chris, Wasi did not talk about the jab. Fighters always say the jab <laughs> is so important. Wasi said, I don't want to throw a jab. I want to throw constant lead left hooks. Well, he was like you talked about. The main thing that he was adamant about, he's got to get off first. 
He feels like he's going to be faster than his opponent, but knows he doesn't have quite the reach, so he wants to throw what you talked about, left hooks, right hand, be in there throwing bombs. He feels like if he actually wants to throw punches and be at risk of getting hit, he wants them to be powerful shots. Wasi, in the quote of the week in our fighter meeting, said, this fight is going to end on a left hook. It might be mine, it might be his. <laughs> Either way, someone's going to bet on a left hook. I love what he said here. He said, I don't want to brawl in this fight. I don't want to brawl, but you know what? I probably will. Bare knuckle bout number four for Steve Townsell, number two promotionally in BKFC. Townsell's bare knuckle fighting championship debut this past February, he lost to Gustavo Trujillo, and then is so often the case in combat sports, he started training with the man he last fought. Townsell regularly training with Gustavo Trujillo. Townsell said he has remade me physically, mentally, I'm in the best condition of my life. Constant in and out movement is what I've been working and precision punches. I mean, Sean, you can just tell Townsend's in a much better place. His physical look at his body. He feels like he's going to have to use his high fight IQ right here, utilize his reach, be faster, and take whatever his opponent gives him. Back we go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the heavyweight division. Presented to you by BetOnline.ag. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears red and white. He stands at even six feet tall. His official weight, uneven 211 pounds. His bare knuckle record stands at 1-0. Fighting out of Sacramento, California. Here is the undefeated Idris Wasi. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black and white. He stands six feet, two inches tall. His official weight, 209.2 pounds. His overall bare knuckle record stands at one victory opposite two defeats. Fighting out of Fort Pierce, Florida, by way of Miami, Florida, here is Steve Tomahawk. And our referee in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn. You just saw the outstanding BKFC fighter Gustavo Trujillo in the corner of Steve Townsell. Townsell said, before training with Trujillo, I was about rushing in recklessly, standing and trading. Now I feel that being Knuckle smart up. is my key to victory. Round number one, black and white trunks for Steve Townsell. Red and white trunks for Idris Wasi. Forward pressure immediately from Townsell. Townsell feigning with the jab. There's that lead look right. tentatively right. from Wasi right. into the clinch. Call of separation and Andrew Glenn, the referee, getting it. Resetting center circle. Oh, got that classic southpaw versus right-handed fighter right there. It's all about who can stay outside that lead foot. Snap jab, counter left hand from Wasi. Overhand right from Townsell just misses the mark. Three two, not a one two, but a three two. Again, Wasi saying he's not going to throw jabs, but lead left hooks. Step in with the right hand is Townsell. Wasi countering, circles back. Jab from Wasi not getting through. Steady forward pressure from Steve Townsell. Forward pressure is good, but you got to make sure you're not just putting yourself in position to get hit there. You got to come behind something. You got to get in that position. Don't stay there. You got to punch. There it is. There's a good left hand. Rossi resetting. 45 seconds remaining round number one of this heavyweight bout. Rossi being tentative, slipping, immediately grabbing the clinch for the separation. That was his defensive clinch to draw the separation from Andrew Black. Hands down, step in, naked right hand from Wasi. Wasi looks very comfortable out there, looks very relaxed. Much improved from his first fight. Final seconds, round number one. 
Round number two for both Steve Pounds and Idris Rossi in DKFC. Strong punches just before the bell that ends round number one. Sean, I thought they could have called that a knockdown because I'm not sure if Rossi wasn't going to go down if those ropes hadn't been there. That was a devastating punch right there for Townsend. Great end of that round for Steven Townsend. That was a fantastic punch. You're going to see it right here. Oh, yes. See, I think he would have went down if it weren't for the ropes. They could have called that a knockdown, in my opinion. It's a good, clean overhand left hand. So the determination in that situation from referee Andrew Glenn, would Wasi have gone down to the canvas if not for the ring ropes? It's a very difficult decision, and I say that as a former pro boxing referee. Andrew Glenn, outstanding in MMA, outstanding in bare knuckle. That's tough, that fast. Well, that was a very close round, but I still think that might have stolen the round right there. When you hit a guy like that, that's probably the most significant punch in that round. But I'm not a judge. Time called by Andrew Glenn. Medical timeout. Drew Wasi seeing Dr. Don Muzi. Wasi still seems a little bit slow to me right now. Do you see the same thing? He just seems like he's a little tentative right now. Slowly walking up to scratch is Wasi, round number two, after the thumbs up from Dr. Muzi. Also from the southpaw stance. True to his word, working with Gustavo Trujillo is a much more measured fighter is Steve Townsell. Wasi claiming that his shoulder is hurt, talking to referee Andrew Glenn. And right there is a the time for Townsell to jump all over him. You got a guy who looks like he's trying to find a way out. Give him that excuse. Put him out for him. If it's an injury such as a shoulder injury. Through the natural course of a fight without a foul, that's a TKO win for Townsell. Rossi jab to the body, big right hand to the left hand. There's the step in power from Townsell. 110 remaining round number two. Falling out the jab now is Rossi. So I'd like to see more with, with Townsell. I'd like to see him throwing more feints right in there. There's a right hand. Andrew Glenn telling Wasi, if you bring your hands together, we'll get the clinch, but that's not automatic. Protect yourself at all times. Counter left hook from Wasi. That landed. Undeterred is Townsell coming forward with the jab from the southpaw stance. Big right hand lands from Andres Wasi. Both fighters down. He tackled him. It's ruled a knockdown on Townsell. Wow. So Glenn said it was a knockdown, and then Wasi falling on top of Townsell. Definitely ruled a knockdown. Townsell coming right back off of the canvas with his sharp jab. There's the good naked left cross. Into the clinch overhook held by Townsell. Final seconds, round number two. Double overs from Townsell gets the separation. There is the bell. I mean, he definitely hit him. He definitely rocked him. Wasi, but then he kind of tackled. I'm kind of surprised they called that a knockdown, but I'd have to see the replay on that one. It looked like he definitely hit him. Yeah, it looked like he definitely was on the way down before he tackled him. That was the punch right there, but hard to tell if he would have fallen down or not. I'm not sure. Off mic, I just spoke to referee Andrew Glenn. He said it was definitely a knockdown, and then Wasi fell on top of him. That's why I counted the knockdown. Okay. I can accept that. Decisive from Andrew Glenn. That's really what you want in combat sports referees. Well, he definitely hit him. He definitely rocked him, but it's hard to tell if he would have went down if it weren't for the... Like he, yeah, he probably would have went down. You're good, baby. I mean, he tried to grab the rope. It was just hard to tell what would have happened there. Very even fight right now, Sean. To round number three, we go of this heavyweight fight. So one knockdown officially ruled, and that's in favor of Idris Wasi in round number two. Counter right, then the left hook from Wasi firing back. Thank for counsel. One, two, not there from Wasi. 
There's a good 2-1 landed by Council. Hard on the entry. But to the clinch. Drew Glenn now telling Council, watch punches to the back of Wasi's head. I mean, Wasi keeps showing signs to me like, he, I just don't know if he's going to continue fighting. Underhook snatched by Townsell. Double overs now from Wasi. That draws the break. Hands on the hips of Idris Wasi. Big swing and a miss, but the entry rear right uppercut audacious. Just misses from Townsell. Left hook from Wasi. And if I'm Townsell right now, I'm really pouring it on because I keep seeing signs from Wasi that he just doesn't seem like he wants to be in there. There's the counter. And that's knockdown number two against the flow of the fight. Every time I say that, he lands a big punch and knocks Council down. And you can just hear the corner right now of Wasi yelling deep breaths. They know they see the same thing I do. Every time he lands a punch, he hurts his opponent. Good step in with the left hand. Punches to the body. Wasi just took his mouthpiece out. That's rule to slip correctly by Andrew Glenn. Why he keep staying getting his mouthpiece out? I'm not sure why he keeps doing that. This is not the sport where you want to take your mouthpiece out. Make good right hand from Idris Wasi. Council continuing to push forward, but yet it's Wasi landing the knockdown in round number two, and again here in round number three. Into the clinch against the ropes, the bell. We move to round four. Wow. I mean, what an interesting fight right here. I mean, look at look at Wasi walking back to his corner. He just looks like he, he, he does not want to be out here, but he, every time he lands a punch, he hurts his opponent. Take a deep breath. Here's Townsend just continuing to come forward. This is what he does and walks right into that combination right there. This is like it hurt him bad and flashing, but it definitely knocked him down. And look, you can just tell how the power that Wasi has in his hands. He hits him with not even clean shots, and they're knocking him down. Chris, 10 eights are not automatic in bare knuckle when a knockdown is recorded. That very possibly, at least from one of the three floor to judge his scorecards, if not two or even all three, could be a 10 9 for Wasi. In essence, they're saying that Townsell was winning and probably won the round, if not for the knockdown. So instead of a 10 8 Wasi, a 10 9 Wasi. It's definitely a possibility, but. You know, we've learned time and time again. I'm not sure exactly how these judges are, are scoring these fights. No open scoring here in the state of Florida. So we can only speculate. No speculation that Steve Townsell has been dropped twice in this fight and now coming hard in the start of round four. And that's Steve Townsell. That's what I'm telling Townsell finally is going to come forward. Wasi's find a way, want to look for a way out of this fight. You got to give it to him. Huge right hand last from Townsell on the entry. Step back, gentlemen. Step back. There's the separation from referee Andrew Glenn. 90 seconds remaining round four. Wasi coming forward very slowly, hands up, naked right hand. Another naked right hand from Idris Wasi. Wasi throwing the 2 3. There's the lead left hook from Idris Wasi. Just hands down to the side, so tired right now. You gotta think that Steve Townsend just put it on his opponent, make him quit. There's good punches right there. Good walk down shot, big left hand. Sean, he hasn't shown any case that he wants to be in this. Oh my God, he just wants to prove me wrong every time I say something. That's what's going on here. Wasi is up, but this fight will not continue. And the win coming through adversity goes to Steve Council. Man, that was a wild fight, Sean. Every time I thought that Wasi was done, he just jumped up. He landed a big right hand. He got back to his feet and everything I thought he wasn't wanting to do. He kept proving me wrong, but then it was just too much. I don't know what exactly happened, but Townsend wore him out and won the fight. Great victory right there. Oh, you just hear that, that flesh sound, that face getting hit by fist. Fantastic. Hard shots right there by Steve Townsend. Full credit to Steve Townsell again, losing to Gustavo Trujillo and Townsell's BKFC debut this past February, then going to Trujillo saying, I would like to train with you. 
He's been working with Trujillo regularly. Trujillo remaking his game. Townsville dedicating himself to becoming less of a brawler, more technical. We saw that also really putting a premium on conditioning. We saw that in that fight. Townsville down in round two, down in round three. He gets the finish with emphasis in round four. Absolutely. I mean, Wazzy did some fantastic things, and you could just see how heavy-handed this guy is. Every time he landed a punch on Stephen Townsville, he hurt him. Whenever he was able to put the combinations together, throw those big bombs, they worked. He just didn't have enough at the end. You, he, I just kept seeing sides in his face. He looked like he didn't want to be there sometimes. Adris Wasi is a really talented fighter. Again, you saw that power. But it was Townsville pushing the fight, pushing the flow, pushing the action. Credit to Adris Wasi, though, that power dropping Townsville in round two, again in round three, but Townsville coming back for the finish in round four. Here is Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Andrew Glenn, calls a stop to this fight at one minute, 14 seconds into round number one for your winner by TKO, Steve Tomahawk Townsville. Sean, great win for Townsville. Stowed a lot of hard getting up, not once, but twice off the canvas to get that victory. One of the more unusual fights in our BKFC history. Adris Wasi really on his back foot, but yet landing knockdowns against Steve Townsville in round two and three, but then a huge left hand, the thudding right hands to the finish in round four. The winner by way of fourth round TKO, Steve Townsville defeats Adris Wasi. Cyrus, that's the view from ringside. We send it back to you. Hey man, it's looking good from my podium as well. What an awesome fight there from the heavyweights. And our first fight as well, the free view was absolutely lit. Now, if you want to be a part of this fully stacked main card, the incredible title fights, all the rematches, you gotta get the app right now. BKFC app, everything's there, including tonight's events and all of our previous events and all of our upcoming events. Just for five bucks, you get the app and you are watching this incredible card here from Hollywood, Florida tonight. It all happens tonight, folks. BKFC 26 right here on the BKFC app. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Watch every live Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship pay-per-view event for only $4.99 per month. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including unlimited access to the full library of BKFC pay-per-views, behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live Bare Knuckle fights from around the globe. You can access it anywhere you want, anytime you want, instantly on most streaming devices. It's all available right now on the new BKFC app, all here for only $4.99 a month. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, still only $4.99 a month. I'm the one and only MVP, Michael Venom Page. Entertaining, unusual, unique. I like to do stuff that doesn't necessarily make sense. Putnam, my Perry. I think I'm one of the toughest men on the planet. It may not always be pretty, but damn it, you can't beat me. We'll see if he ever comes forward at all. I want to go in there, I want to land shots and not be touched. I'm more a sniper. Like I said, man, if he's there at the end of it, well, He'll be bleeding. Connor, the Brown Town Bomber. Tierney. 